I made a past video outlining the Whitaker family tree and who is who. It's been quite some time since we've reviewed them, and in this video I will update you all on what happened in the last two years. There are new faces we will be introduced to, new family members, so let's get started. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I untangle family trees, and in this video, it will be continuation of the Whitakers. So thank you for watching. You can check out the original Whitaker Embraer family tree ancestral video on my channel, where I go through their ancestral history and where they came from, who married who. Link is in the description. Subscribe for more videos and let me know in the comments who you want to see next. Here is their family tree and everyone is still alive. I know there have been rumors, especially this video that says Larry is dead. I will address all of it. As a disclaimer, all of the photos are credited to Mark and his channel Soft White Underbelly. I will be referencing family members from his videos throughout. Let's start with the matriarch Betty. Betty's birthday is January 31st, 1952 and is turning 73 in 2025. Her favorite season is spring and summer and she will cook for the family typically beans, fried potatoes, mashed potatoes, spaghetti. As the high-functioning matriarch, she will still take care of everyone, and there is a fear that if she ever passes next, who will take care of the lesser-functioning family members, Ray, Lorraine, Timmy. Betty sleeps here on this couch, and she does have heart problems. She recently had a heart attack, but is doing okay as of currently. As for Timmy and his mother Lorraine, due to the limited square footage of the house, Timmy and Lorraine do share the same bed. Next year in 2025, Timmy will be 46 years old on April 7th, while Lorraine will be 79 on September 20th. Of the family, Timmy and Lorraine are the only ones who go to church. Lorraine has trouble hearing, which is why we often see her staring into space. But when she is aware of what's going on, she is able to understand, even to the point of getting up and greeting you, hugs and handshakes. But the limitations of her abilities is shown when she is tasked to put an ornament on the Christmas tree. She was able to copy the gesture of when Betty showed her what to do, bringing the ornament up to the tree, however was unable to complete the task, not knowing what to do next, and actually hook it onto the branch. It's partially due to eyesight problems, but in the end, Betty had to complete it for her. We finally know who Timmy's dad is. It's a man named Joe Bowen, and it was a sexual assault on Lorraine. He took her into the hill, and she became pregnant. Ray is doing well. His birthday is August 28th, 1953, and will be turning 72 in 2025. His leg still bothers him, and he does use leg braces. We get to learn a little bit more about Ray and how he communicates. When he was getting his hair cut, he wanted his mustache saved in order to prevent the barber from cutting it off because he can't speak in the way that we do. He took off halfway through the shave to the other chair to avoid it being cut off. Betty understood and he used her voice to communicate to others, and they kept it. Here is when his haircut is finished, and in Mark's video, you can notice a different tone in his grunt when he indicates that he is pleased. Or another example was when he had a snake bite on his hand. He went and got a shovel to bring the snake to the house and grunted at them while pointing to the bite and showing the snake. It's very apparent he is aware of what is happening around him. Kenneth is still a good guy. His birthday is July 8th, 1957, and will be turning 68 in 2025. He is still the same guy. Nothing much has changed with him. Larry is the one who usually takes Timmy, Lorraine, and Ray out to the doctor or to the store. A lot has happened to him. He was presumed dead by his daughter and was surprised to know that he died. His birthday is January 21st, 1956, and will be turning 69 in 2025. We get to meet Larry's grandson, Brandon and Lewis. Brandon is the baby photographed by Mark with Lorraine and Barbara. You see this area in West Virginia is infested with drugs and Brandon, as sweet as he seemed, was an unfortunate victim of the surroundings. In 2025, he will be 22 years old. He lives about 45 minutes away with his fiancée and has three children, a boy, a girl, and one more. He did have them taken away because of the drugs. We don't know if he got them back yet. He grew up from about three months to five or six years old with Betty and the Whitakers until he went to school. He lived with them and recalls fond memories, and one of them was fishing with Freddy and cutting down trees for fun while Betty was sitting on the porch 
sipping coffee. That's Brandon's son with Betty in 2023, Larry's great-grandson. One of the Whitakers that probably would have been very popular might have been their brother Freddy. Freddy was like Ray. He couldn't speak, and there was one more Barbara who was like them as well, could not talk. So Barbara, Freddy, Lorraine, and Ray were the most handicapped. However, we still get a good sense of personality with Freddy as we do with Ray. How we see Ray now, mellow and comedic, was not the younger version of Ray. He was always angry to the world, barking and screaming, a real Tasmanian. Freddy was like how we see Ray now, mellow and calm, unless for specific instances when he would get upset. Freddy died from a blockage in his heart in 2013. And the entire family does have heart problems. Betty recently suffered from a heart attack. Lorraine, if you watch Mark's videos, does have difficulty breathing. She did have to put stints in. Larry has AFib. And Larry's daughter BJ also has heart problems. So BJ is another new face and posed quite a controversy. Betty, known as BJ, is Larry's younger daughter. She said Larry was the best dad ever and her mom was a good mother. Her parents never did drugs and her mom would be on her back about it. She had good memories and a good childhood growing up. Unfortunately, the surrounding area was not great, and when she was 40, that's when she started taking drugs, heroin, and crack. This caused her life to spiral out of control, and eventually her kids got fed up. They didn't want anything to do with her. She has five kids. Brandon and Lewis are two of them. So the controversy that happened was that BJ called Mark crying and claiming that her father Larry died. Could he give her money for the funeral so she could get Betty and Ray and the rest of them clothes? Mark called Betty to confirm. Did Larry die? Betty said yes. So he gave her money, about $1,000. He found out that she was lying and so went to surprise the Whitakers to get to the bottom of this. It turned out that everyone knows of BJ's drug addiction. Betty would sometimes give her a little bit of money knowing where it went, but the problem goes down another generation with Brandon, her son. When he said he needed money for his kids, Betty would open her purse seemingly oblivious to where it went. Brandon turned out to also have a drug addiction. BJ said she would go away to North Carolina because she doesn't know where the drugs are there so she won't use it. Mark got spooked by this and felt betrayed. Is all the money going to support bad habits? He called to check in and see if BJ actually did leave, knowing with his sources that she very well didn't. Betty said she did, and even Kenneth said that she did. So Mark knew they were lying and wanted to drop them. With an open mind, he soon realized maybe they're just protecting their own kin first. If we rewind to the times before Mark, when Brandon and the other nephews were growing up with the Whitakers, they actually got harassed quite often. People would drive up to their house and make loud noises all hours of the day. Egg them, throw rocks at them, break their windows. They were terrorized. It was not the fame that we see today. So even though Mark was giving them money, BJ was family. And family comes first for them and a lot of people in this part of the country. It's a way of coming together and defending themselves. So they were just protecting her. Even though Mark was an ally, she came first. Finally, we have Lewis, BJ's other son, Janice, Jason Whitaker, and John Whitaker. Lewis was brought up in North Carolina until about two years old, and he is the younger brother of Brandon. And then BJ brought him back to West Virginia to stay with his grandpa Larry. Both Brandon and Lewis did not see their mom often, nor did they ever see their biological father. However, they would see their stepfather beating BJ often to the point Larry had to step in with a gun and shoot the wall, scaring him away. This led the boys to go into foster care for a little while. After Lewis was on the football team until he had to move again, Lewis works two jobs in fast food, has no children, and he wants to move away where there are more opportunity, and the only thing keeping him in West Virginia is seeing Betty and the gang. He did get into trouble with the law as a minor, and as an adult, he recently stole a car. Janice Whitaker on the tree is Larry's wife, and I can confirm that it was her funeral that Mark first went to to meet the Whitakers. She was BJ's mom and a good person. No drugs. Larry loved her. BJ said that she had a great childhood with her mother Janice. However, Janice developed really bad diabetes and passed away from that. Larry and Janice walked in the snow to get married. He worked sunrise to sundown, sometimes six days a week for extra money, and tried his best to give her everything she wanted. She loved it in West Virginia, seeing all the mountains. Larry never got married again. 
when Larry had a heart attack, she was getting worse. Her feet always hurt. When he had his heart attack and recovering, he was not at home, but Janice insisted to stay by his side. She sat and slept in a chair beside him. He tried his best to get her to go home and get some rest, but she refused. He couldn't get her to go home no matter how hard he tried. You see, this gave her an opportunity to wait on him for once, as he always waited on her. Jason Whitaker is the nephew of Betty. The family doesn't trust him, says he's full of lies, but he has been in and out of jail. He confirmed that Carl in this tree is his half-brother, and he also has another sister named Kathy. Jason has two girls, Jessica and Julie, and the only one in contact with him is his elder daughter, Jessica. In 2025, he will be 46 with four grandchildren already. He wants to stay in West Virginia to get off his drugs and then go to Wisconsin to be with his family and kids. Finally, we meet John Whitaker. He is Jason's older brother. He grew up in Chicago, but turns out life there was just as bad and so much prefers West Virginia. He does odd jobs and is a mechanic and is quite high functioning. John, Jason, and BJ do not seem to have any disabilities. Here are some pictures of their house. It's slightly different, so the exterior is different, the interior is somewhat the same. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out the Ancestral Family Tree of the Whitakers on my channel where I go through all the members and their brothers and sisters who are alive and also passed away. Subscribe for more videos. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of my suggestions and I will see you in the next one.